Hey, what's going on guys? In this episode of Rebuilding the Cutlass, we're gonna be doing the review on my Holly Sniper system and also a walkthrough of how I installed it. Let's get to it. So a few of you may know if you follow and watch my channel regularly, but I picked up this car a few years ago. Uh, when I picked up that car, it was kind of like a barn find. There was just the uh, rolling body, the engine and trans was not in it and I really needed to have a good starting place. So I went ahead and rebuilt the engine, and at that time I decided to just throw on a Edelbrock uh, 600 CFM carburetor. That was fine at the moment, everything like that, but over the last couple of years, I realized I'm not really a carburetor kind of guy. I don't know how to tune them. I haven't really grown up with them or anything like that. So I really had a lot of trouble with uh, keeping that thing tuned correctly and driving the way it should. So last year I went out and bought the Holly Sniper EFI system. And let me tell you, it's been making a world of difference. And that's kind of the purpose of this episode is to actually go over why I like it so much. Also the install, how I did it, the parts you might need, what troubles you might run into and the overall cost. So let's go ahead and start at the rear and we're gonna start at the fuel tank because that's where we gotta get the fuel from and it's a good place to start. Uh, finding out how I went through my journey and uh, getting this thing installed on the cutlass. So let's get to it. So then one of the first things you need to know about running the sniper system is that you should have to have an electric fuel pump. Something that actually pushes a, about 45 to 55 PSI up to the front of the car. You can't run that mechanical fuel pump like in a traditional carburetor system. It just doesn't have enough pressure. So we need to start back here because we need to actually have a new fuel pump installed. Now, with that said, I opted to just go ahead and switch up my fuel tank at the exact same time. This fuel tank that I had on the car, this is my old one, was uh, very old, crusty. I actually had a leak up on the uh, uh, top of it where the fuel neck was that I repaired the first time I dropped it down. But I uh, went ahead and opted for a brand new tank wasn't that much, like $120, $150. It, it was a good deal. So I went ahead and bought a brand new tank and then I installed the electronic fuel pump system. So there's two ways you can go about it. You can go with the internal uh, fuel pump, traditional on like how new cars are ran, or you can run an external one and just kind of siphon the gas out uh, well, with an external pump. With me, I decided to go with the internal fuel pump and I really, really like that. And there's also a few advantages with going with an internal fuel pump. You don't have to worry about it being on the external side of the tank where it could catch debris and random other things. Also, it increases longevity of it being inside the tank because the actual gas is cooling the fuel pump. Uh, heat is what really kills fuel pumps, it really does. So I really, really like that I decided to go inside the tank. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, system that I decided to go with. Now for me, I decided to install it uh, like this. So the fuel pump that I did, I ended up actually wallowing out this hole quite a bit larger where it would fit the base of the fuel pump into it. I then ran the lines out this way, which is towards the front of the car, similar to like how this one is. And for the sending unit, I ended up just drilling out a new hole here and bought a separate sending unit that would fit down into here. So now I have the fuel pump installed here and then the sending unit installed there and it's been working great. Uh, so, so now I have all the lines there, I have the fuel line going out, I have the return line coming back and I've had zero issues with the install since doing that. So now let's go ahead and slide underneath the car and see what we can actually see of my install. All right, let's go ahead and slide underneath here. So the first thing you'll notice is, like I mentioned, I have a brand new uh, fuel tank. Also bought new straps at the exact same time. Uh, I have a couple wires kind of tied up there, but this one is for my fuel pump turn on, and then this is the sending unit wire. Uh, I probably should do something a little better with that fuel pump wire, but it is what it is for right now. And uh, let's go ahead and go further back. We might need to jack up the car, actually, to uh, see the uh, fuel pump. So now finally underneath the car, we can go ahead and go up and we can see the fuel pump up there and also the three lines running out of it. So you can notice one crappy line and two really nice lines. So the crappy line there is just for the vent 
But the other two is Earl's Vapor Guard line. I went ahead and bought brand new uh, line for most of the system because I just didn't trust the factory stuff. So uh, the Vapor Guard stuff is top of the line, uh, meant for fuel systems, and uh, I went ahead and used it for this one. You can also see I have the ground wire coming out of there, and then that's also tied up to the chassis. So let's go ahead and follow these lines up to the front of the car uh, where they go up into the uh, sniper system. So when running the lines, I tried to run similar to the stock OEM lines, which are right here. So they kind of go up into the chassis right over here and uh, make their way past the axle up front. Um, they go tucked up into there, two lines right there. And it's very nice having the vapor guard stuff because it's all flexible and you can run it how you want. So then I slowly go up to here and we'll meet it on the other side of the car here. So now on the side, while the fuel pump does have a sock on the bottom of it, it is recommended to obviously run a fuel filter. So I went ahead and picked up this fuel filter the exact same time and I have the line running into it. Also, it's mounted to the side of the frame and then the line coming out of it is also a flexible line that then connects into a hard line. I ran brand new hard lines uh, on the side there all the way up to the front. I ran the hard lines because it's cheaper than the vapor guard system and also uh, these are just straight runs which make it real simple. So let's go ahead and meet these all the way up to the front and take a look what it looks like from there. So you can see down there on the frame uh, where the two hose clamps are uh, where the hard line leads a, meets another flexible line and it runs through the frame like the OEM one does. And it runs all the way up front here and it comes out right there. And then you can see the two lines coming out of there and I have the one line right here that runs all the way up to the sniper system. That is the return line. And then the other line, which is right here in front of us, comes up over top the alternator and then I have a fuel gauge that can tell me the pressure uh, so that way I can make sure that I am getting the right amount of fuel pressure for this system. Uh, while it's been sitting, it's been leaking off a little bit, but it does have about 20 PSI from the last time I did run it. And then you can also see that goes into the uh, inlet. So let's go ahead and take off this breather and see what else lies underneath there. So now that we have the breather off, uh, as you can see here, as I mentioned, this is the inlet that goes, at, actually feeds the uh, sniper system. Uh, we have a bunch of wires that are all ran around. It's actually really, really simple to wire this thing up. Uh, there are a few videos out there on actually how to wire it up. I'm not going to go into the depth there, but it's only a few wires, a ground, a positive, the fuel system, and then a relay that you have to uh, wire up. But I went ahead and installed all that and uh, ran the cable inside for the dash unit or the touch screen. Uh, I do have a two inch spacer on here. It's not because the sniper system has to have it. It is because I have the Edelbrock Performer uh, intake and it has these two uh, pieces right here. I think it's for um, some type of emissions, but otherwise my throttle linkage doesn't clear. But I went ahead and uh, threw that two inch spacer on there I actually heard that it runs better with a two inch spacer because um, if you have a dual plane or a single plane, I forget which way is better. I think it's single planes better, but I think this is a dual plane um, intake. The carburetor with a spacer is actually better because it actually feeds the fuel more correctly. But I could be wrong. I would have to double check that, but uh, it's been running great like this. So with the sniper system now on here and everything like that, uh, the next steps is to go inside and actually program everything. The programming is actually really, really simple. And like I said, there are videos out there on actually how to program it. I'm not going to go into depth here. This is kind of just a review on how I like it and just a basic install of how I've done it. So let's go ahead and hop inside and see what it looks like. Before we go inside the car, one more thing I forgot to mention is that you need to install a O2 sensor on here. So you need to either weld in a bung or uh, you need to use the one that they supply. I didn't really like the one they supplied, so I went ahead and welded one in. So let's go ahead and take a look underneath the car and see where that is. So this is the O2 sensor that I had welded in. Uh, you can see the bung there, and then the wire goes up to the front. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and go inside the car and look at the touchscreen, and then we could probably go for a test drive. So now taking a look at the uh, touchscreen system inside the car, I just have this cable ran all the way up. I can just kind of uh, hold it. I also have a dash mount for it. But uh, as you can see right now, it's not on. What if I turn the key on? You can see it started initializing. You can hear the fuel pump kicking on and you now have the dashboard settings. Right now the car is still off, so that's the reason it says RPM stall, open loop, not learn, and just check some battery voltage. But uh, it's just some basic settings or basic uh, dashboard type uh, um, items on here, and uh, until we turn it on, you'll, you won't get anything else. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and go for a quick drive. So one of the things I really love about the Holly Sniper EFI is the fact that you turn the key, it starts. It's gonna run. Uh, there's no tuning or anything that you have to do. You just type in the configurations uh, on the touchscreen and it's gonna work. Uh, it really monitors all of my vitals really, really well for the car. Uh, you can see that there's a coolant temperature sensor. There's a ability to turn off uh, fans, one and two fans which we're going to be hooking up in the future episodes. But there's also the ability to do the AC shutoff as well if you're running air conditioning, just in case you get too hot. It's got an RPM gauge, tack, uh, your idle air control valve, or position sensor. Uh, it's got a little bit of everything. But let's go ahead and turn it on the main street here, and let's give it a little bit of gas, see what it's got. price breakdown on this Holly Sniper system install. So the first thing I want to look at is the fuel tank and fuel straps. That was $126.96. Then we have the Holly Sniper in-tank retrofit fuel module at $317.95. The Holly Sniper EFI fuel injection kit uh, came with everything I needed uh, for $999.95. Uh, we got a 90 degree fitting from Vibrant for roughly $15.95. The Holly EFI fuel hose kit or the Oro's Vapor Card kit um, came with some AN fittings and also the fuel filter for $144.95. We have the Earl's Anal Tough pressure gauge adapter fitting that will fit the um, fuel pressure gauge at $15.76. We have a aluminum fuel line from Jegs, a uh, 3 8 inch diameter, $17.99. Earl's fuel pressure gauge at $33.36. We have the Vibrant O2 sensor bung at $225. Uh, we have a fuel pump filter holder at $987. Uh, assorted Earl's uh, AN fittings, we have a uh, hose end and a 90 degree hose end. Uh, that came to roughly 18 bucks. Uh, we have the Skosh Magic Mount for $11.99. We have a Oldsmobile fuel pump block off plate. This is kind of hard to find. This seems to be the only company that actually sells it. So that came out to $15.99. Uh, a couple of Dorman terminal bolts for my uh, Optima battery, uh, 308. We have the uh, throttle linkage and the throttle cable bracket, roughly about $19. And then we have a fuel sender, uh, 0 to 90 ohms, and that came up to 1902. And it came up to about a grand total of $1,772.07. 
to do this Holly Sniper install. So that's pretty much a wrap for this episode. Like I mentioned, I can't say it enough. Uh, I really like the Holly Sniper EFI system. Uh, it comes with everything I ever needed. It does everything I want it to do. Like I said, faster starts, more performance. You got better fuel mileage. You got the touch screen, easy to configure. It's got its own ECU unit in it. So, I mean, it's really a nice system and honestly, well worth the price. I mean, it's, it's definitely worth the price. So, like I mentioned before, look down in the description. Uh, it has all the facts you need to know. It also has the links of where you can purchase it, the way that I went about doing it. And uh, also, make sure to click a like in, on my video. Subscribe to my channel. I got a bunch more uh, videos on my cut list out there. So, just make sure you check those out. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.